Now, for more than a year or so, to be honest, uh, I think I'm going back a few years, um, quite a few people have asked me to uh, if I could build some antennas that will operate for helium mining. And uh, this is something I don't know a great deal about. I've only read the Wikipedia page and a, a few other publications around it, so I'm not an expert on helium mining, the fundamentals of it. But uh, one thing we can certainly do is build uh, some antennas for that purpose. Um, it seems to operate around 850 megahertz, 800 megahertz to 900 megahertz, and uh, a little bit uh, below that as well. So we're gonna be trying to build an antenna that uh, operates around 800 to 900 megahertz, somewhere in that region. And I've come up with, um, for the first antenna we're going to build, is a directional antenna. It's gonna be based off this one here. This is a uh, two point 4 gigahertz uh, little directional antenna here and the measurements for this are really really simple it's a really really easy build so if you've never had a go at building an antenna before then you should have no problems in doing this I've tried to keep it as simple as uh, I possibly can so in the vein of trying to keep this simple we're going to build it from some single sided copper clad PCB board this is uh, 100 millimeters wide by uh, 220 millimeters long and this is a standard size that you can pick up off of uh, eBay and Amazon as well uh, so that's what we're going to be using to build uh, the core of our antenna we're also going to be needing some type of connector now I'm presuming you're going to be putting this uh, antenna outside and when I uh, build an antenna that's going to operate outside I like to use n-type connectors instead of uh, SMA connectors so we're going to be using this n-type connector here which is uh, pretty simple to mount you just need to drill a hole through and then tighten this nut up um, I've already gone ahead and put some uh, three millimeter diameter tubing on this to extend it out because that's going to be our feed but first of all what we need to do is cut this PCB board to the uh, required size that we want now, as I say, I wanted to keep this simple, so uh, the measurements that we're going to need for the uh, reflector and the main driven element part of this antenna is 100 millimeters wide, which uh, this PCB board already is, so we don't need to cut in that direction, but we need it to be 152 millimeters long in this direction, so we're going to need to cut this to length. I am going to make a, a PDF, but the measurements for this are really, really simple, but there will be a PDF in the description for you to uh, download. Now I've got my two uh, pieces of PCB cut to the required size and I've put two markings on this one. I've just uh, found the center of the PCB by measuring diagonally from corner to corner and uh, here I've uh, put a mark here as well. This is 25 millimeters up from uh, the bottom here and in the center of the PCB that's where we're going to connect uh, this tube in and also uh, we're going to uh, make a slightly bigger hole for the end type connector but uh, the tubing is going to come up and connect through there so I'm going to drill these two holes I'm going to just hold both of these together with some masking tape um, I'm going to use a, a slightly smaller uh, drill bit just to, to mark them out basically at this stage because some of these holes are going to be a different diameter from the other ones so I'm going to use this just to basically mark them out and get them started. So I've got my two uh, pieces of PCB here and I've also marked them front and back so I don't get confused because we're going to have different diameter holes uh, in uh, each one of these. So uh, this one's F, this one's B. Uh, what I'm going to do first is I'm going to enlarge this hole here so we can fit the end type connector through and just uh, bolt that down onto here. Now I've got all the uh, holes uh, drilled to the appropriate diameter. I've got uh, an M4 uh, bolt here with its nut. That's going to uh, connect both the reflector and the main driven element together. Now you could space uh, this space in between out, which needs to be 30 millimeters with uh, a couple of uh, nuts and just uh, you know appropriately tighten it down. So we've got a gap there of uh, uh, 30 millimeters and then basically put that through and then bolt it through onto the other side. I've made 
a little uh, aluminium piece of tube in here just to go in between over the top of the bolt to get my 30 millimeter gap between the uh, two reflectors here but as I said you can simplify it down and use a couple of bolts I've also widened uh, the hole here on the main driven element so we can put the uh, tube in here this is a 30 millimeter diameter tube in and uh, sorry three millimeter diameter tube in so we can put that through and then solder it onto this side here when we've got it all connected up so this is the antenna essentially finished and as I said it's a pretty straightforward basic design and uh, all that's left to do now is to solder this in place on here so we get a nice good connection with uh, this side of the PCB but uh, there's one thing I want to show you just in case you want to take this a uh, step further now as it stands this is a 7 dB uh, directional antenna but we can make it a 9 dB directional antenna with uh, a couple of additions to this now what we can do is add a couple of parasitic elements you've seen me do this on uh, previous antennas in the past um, I've got two parasitic elements here they're cut out of some single sided uh, copper clad PCB unfortunately uh, the minimum diameter uh, that you're going to need for this antenna is just a little bit bigger than the waste you would get off of the PCB board it's a little bit unfortunate that but uh, we need to uh, have a circular piece of PCB here uh, needs to be uh, 71 millimeters in diameter up to a maximum of uh, 74 millimeters in diameter any more or any less you start upsetting the center frequency of this particular uh, design of antenna now I've got a hole saw here this is what I used to cut mine out it's a 75 millimeter hole saw but because of the thickness of the teeth on here I end up with uh, a circle that's just a little bit over 71 millimeters in diameter so all we're going to have to do to this antenna is uh, add a slightly longer bolt on here so we can attach the uh, parasitic elements as I said if you wanted to stop here you'd have a uh, 7 dB antenna but if you wanted to do what I'm going to do now and add a couple of parasitic elements you'd end up with an antenna that operates around 9 dB of gain so if you've got the tools then it's a, again it's a pretty straightforward thing to do to uh, add some extra gain to your antenna so now we've got the parasitic elements connected and the space in between the parasitic elements wants to be uh, 10 millimeters you do have uh, a plus or minus of two millimeters so if you have it at eight that's fine as well if you have it at 12 that's also fine it just happens that uh, two of the uh, nuts uh, gives me enough space in at 10 millimeters there between the parasitic elements so I didn't make any more of the tubing but uh, let's take this over now to the uh, test bench and see how well it works uh, the uh, given frequency that we want as I say we're looking around uh, 850 megahertz 950 megahertz that sort of frequency response here we are on the test bench then and uh, as you can see I've got the antenna set up you've seen me do this many times before and the output on the network analyzer is looking really good so I've got the cursor centered on here at the moment and it's centered on 870 megahertz that's really nice the return loss at that is very very low 1.010 really really nice return loss I didn't expect it to be uh, that low when I built them for the upper frequencies at 2.4 gigahertz for instance the uh, return loss is just slightly higher than this so yeah that's uh, very very pleasing if we uh, move the cursor we can see we're still getting it quite good there at uh, 884 megahertz it's looking good it starts to go up around 900 megahertz there again the return loss isn't bad I've seen worse uh, antennas uh, that I've purchased off eBay but uh, it does start to creep up once we go beyond 900 megahertz and all the way to about 812 megahertz there it's, again it starts to creep up so uh, yeah it's uh, really nice I would have liked it to have been 
a little bit wider but you can see it works nice there at uh, 870 megahertz we've got another secondary response over here I was hoping that was going to be a little bit better but uh, again you know around 600 megahertz I was expecting to have a, a frequency response there but uh, yeah it's really low that's maybe why we're getting such good return loss at the frequency we want with that uh, secondary response being extremely low but yeah that is looking nice that's going to perform really really well in that uh, mid 800 megahertz region or 850 megahertz region let's say so as you saw on the network analyzer not bad for a first time build um i'll still try and spend uh, a few afternoons uh, looking at this see if we can get it any better any wider um i've also been asked if i will show a uh, bi quad uh, version for these uh, frequencies as well which i will do in the future um i've got an omnidirectional one coming into the lab for us to take a look at that i've purchased from uh, china um claiming uh, i think around 16 db which doesn't quite add up for the size that it is so that should be uh, an interesting one and apparently that's sold just for the uh, helium network so yeah we'll build an omnidirectional one as well in the future and uh, i will definitely look at a uh, bi quad build for this frequency as well um as i say if, if you want to go the extra mile with this particular design as well then uh, you could also build it out of aluminium like this one here uh, the benefits of building it out of aluminium is uh, because it's a lot thicker than the PCB material you will have a better front to back ratio which means more of the energy coming from here is going to be uh, thrown forward so uh, this will perform a little bit more gain than uh, this one uh, contrary to popular belief microwaves do travel through metal um, that's why we're going to have more energy going in the uh, reverse direction through the PCB because it's a lot thinner than this where the aluminium one is going to block a lot more of those microwaves and send them off in the direction that we want that is uh, what is known as front to back ratio but uh, you know as a first time build if you want to uh, put it together with some PCB material then uh, you know in the real world will you probably see much of a difference between uh, an aluminium one and a PCB board one maybe just slightly but as I say if you want to go that extra mile then building it out of aluminium will perform probably half a dB better than uh, this one yeah let's say half a dB better so if you did enjoy the video please give it a thumbs up any comments or questions drop them below if you've got any advice uh, when it comes to the uh, helium network uh, frequency if I'm missing anything then please let us know in the comments and uh, as I say I will look at some more builds for this uh, particular uh, let's say domain of the uh, spectrum networks that's because it does seem to be a popular thing this uh, helium mining and as I say I don't know a great deal about it but I thought uh, we'll have a go at building some antennas for it so if you did enjoy the video please give it a thumbs up as I said comments or questions drop them below I'll do my best to answer them and hopefully you'll join me on the next one